This week, Microsoft released a hangover cure for Exchange Server administrators after New Year. And at CES, Intel released their 12th generation hybrid architecture mobile CPUs. But can they compete with the Apple M1 chip? So Exchange administrators had a rude awakening on New Year's Day when they found that their mail transport servers were full of email. So there was lots of email sitting in the queues that hadn't been sent. Now this turned out to be an issue with an interaction between Exchange server and the built-in malware and the definition update for it. Now, Microsoft has released a script that Exchange administrators can run on each of their mailbox servers to clear those queues. Also this week, Microsoft released out-of-band updates for Windows Server, for all supported versions of Windows Server now, and it's also releasing updates for Windows 10 and client operating systems for an issue to do with the remote desktop services system in Windows Server. Now, this issue could actually prevent devices from connecting to a Windows Server that's hosting the remote desktop services role. So if you're using that, you'll probably want to look at testing and rolling out these updates. Microsoft also announced this week a change that's coming to Microsoft Teams. So in the future, and this should be generally available by the middle of March this year, users will be able to hide their own video, but still have it available for all other participants in a meeting. Now, this is based on research that Microsoft has done that basically shows that if you're in a meeting, then if you can constantly see your own video, this adds to meeting fatigue. So Microsoft is now giving you the option to switch off your own video feed, but allow everybody else to still see you. Also at CES this week, Intel introduced their mobile CPUs, the 12th generation hybrid architecture. And this is the uh, extension of the uh, 12th generation desktop CPUs that were introduced by Intel at the end of 2021. Now, the big question that we have here is, we know that these CPUs can really perform well on desktops, but how well are they gonna perform in notebooks? And most importantly, how are they gonna compare to Apple's M1 chip? So if you're in the market for buying a notebook right now and you don't need Windows, then it's probably a no-brainer really to look at a MacBook, depending on what your needs are. Now, the main problem that we have, of course, with the Intel mobile chips is the amount of heat that they generate. So the first problem is if you're going to be doing something that's processor intensive, then the CPU will start to throttle and to slow your system down. Now, the Mac chips don't have that problem because they're much more efficient. And of course, the other issue that you have with the Intel chips is battery life. Um, performance on battery life. So not only do Intel chips generally have much less battery life, but the performance when you're disconnected from the mains is usually a lot lower than when you're plugged in. Now, these are two problems that Apple has been able to solve with their ARM-based architecture chips. So until we start to see those new chips arrive in mobile device devices, which should be starting in February this year, and of course, they will trickle through the device hardware all the way through this year. We won't really know the answer to that, but it's going to be very interesting to see how that pans out. And finally this week, also at CES, AMD has released their Ryzen 6000 series of chips. And these are the first chips to have Microsoft's Pluton security chip built in. Now, this is a chip that's actually part of the CPU die, so it's not a separate component. And this technology actually comes from Xbox. And what Microsoft is hoping that it's gonna do is to be able to stop people who get physical access to a device from being able to extract sensitive information, maybe things like cryptographic keys or passwords or things that are stored securely within that system. And the Microsoft Pluton chip is designed to prevent those kind of attacks on devices. And the Pluton chip is also coming later this year to Intel chips as well. That's it and I'll see you next week.